So in this video we are going to do just a really basic introduction into what a basic corrective makeup would be for theater. So I feel like everybody kind of has a different definition of like what stage makeup is and of what corrective makeup would be. Um, the way I like to think about corrective makeup is not necessarily that we are like trying to change your face, we're not trying to make you look like somebody else. Um, there's nothing wrong with the way that anybody looks. I want to make that perfectly clear, completely clear, 100% clear. Um, I do not believe in corrective makeup um, to make you like look more like what they want the person to look like for a role or something like that. I like to think of it as it's just the version of you um, that you would be if you know we all slept enough and we all drank enough water and we all like ate properly and exercised and we didn't have health problems because we all live in some like fantastic perfect world that we currently don't live in at all. Um, so that's the way I think about it. I think that it can get like a really like negative connotation, um, especially with all the people that are out there now and um, all the influencers and everything, you know, there's a lot of wonderful people, but then it can get really difficult to kind of like look at those images um, and not see yourself represented in those. So I don't want anyone to feel like um, you have to do a certain kind of corrective makeup or a certain kind of look to become a different person. Um, it's really... I think too not only about just like putting like I guess like your best face forward not that there's anything wrong with the face that you have right now it's perfect you're beautiful and it's fine um, but too in theater it has to do with um, when you are at such a great distance from someone and you are under these really really bright stage lights your face is just gonna look a little bit different than it would to um, the just like naked human eye right so like if I was just talking to you all face to face I would look different than what I look like right now um, I have a couple of separate lights on me as you can see the more I move I turn like crazy bright even though see it won't do it now but it's gonna do it one time when I'm not doing it on purpose but you can kind of see that like um, lighting really makes a big difference distance makes a big difference so in theater we are really just trying to like put back um, what those things take away so for instance somebody like me um, if I go on stage with no kind of makeup on I am so pale that if I am under bright light sometimes it's just like a giant blob of light um, which I'm sure if you have not experienced in these videos you will experience at some point um, so for me it's good to come in and kind of add in like some contours and things like that um, if you're really really far away from people um, but you have a little bit of like eye makeup on or a little bit of like lipstick or like I think eyebrows are a really great example um, a lot of people think they don't have to fill their eyebrows in and then you put them on stage with their eyebrows not filled in and where did your eyebrows go? They're gone, right? So I think um, really if you just think about it, if you hate the idea of makeup, you hate the idea of corrective makeup, um, which you know honestly sometimes I hate it. I do think it can have very negative connotations and can make people feel really bad about themselves and um, that they need to correct something. I think if you just think of it as a way of like putting back what the lighting and the distance um, and like, you know, sometimes you're on a giant elaborate set and you're in this giant elaborate costume so if your face doesn't have the same amount of like color and intensity as everything around you, that can also just kind of like take away from you and as the performer, um, you're kind of what it's all about, right? People want to be able to see you so that's, that's really all we're trying to do um, when we add makeup in. So as far as like what a basic um, stage makeup would be, for me, I think for all people, um, some kind of a like foundation concealer just to kind of like even you out if you need it. Um, a little bit of like shading around the cheeks I think is a really good idea for most people. I like to just think of it as like face framing. Um, and we'll get into this more in like other videos with highlighting and contouring. Um, highlighting and contouring kind of started, not started, but the reason that we do it is to sort of like keep things more symmetrical and a lot of people say that like you know like the oval face shape is like the perfect face shape so we're highlighting and contouring um, to try to get that oval face shape I don't necessarily like to think about it that way because again I think that putting perfect in front of it anything can give really negative connotations so I try to think of it as more like we're just framing our faces so that we can see them a little bit better on stage um, so again, for me, I really like my cheekbones, so I do a lot of shading around my cheekbones. I don't really care about shading a lot of the rest of my face, so I don't like contour my nose on a regular basis or things like that. Um, and I don't think that anyone should have to. So that's why I really try to stick to that just kind of face framing thing, because that way if there is a really, really bright light on you, they, there you go, there it was, um, you can still kind of retain some definition on your face. Um, so I think like a basic foundation or concealer to even you out a little bit of shading or contouring and then just a little bit of highlight and that highlight is just going to be anywhere you want to draw attention to. For a lot of people we like to draw a little bit of attention right here to just kind of like brighten and open up our eyes and then usually like the tops of the cheekbones. 
Um, some people like to highlight the nose, they like to highlight, you know, under the brows, things like that. Um, so that's a great thing to do. Um, and then I think everybody needs some kind of eyebrow color. Um, there are very few people out there, even the people with like really dark eyebrows and thick eyebrows, if you put them on stage and they have no makeup on, it's gonna look a little bit weird. And I think sometimes what you need to do is like take a day during tech where people have no makeup on um, under the stage lights versus the days that they do and you'll really see the difference. Um, so I think everybody needs just like a little bit of like brow pencil um, or brow powder, eyeshadow, pomades, gels, mascaras, whatever you want to use. Um, a little bit of brow color is great and a lot of times too you might be putting a wig that doesn't match your hair color so like if I get put in a redhead wig um, my eyebrows are blonde so it would look a little bit weird if I saw these blonde eyebrows and like vibrant red hair so that could be another reason um, that somebody may ask you to color in your brows. Um, I never ask anyone to like reshape their brows or anything like that. The shape is not important to me um, as far as like as like a makeup designer when I'm sending somebody out on stage I just want their eyebrows to be there and to be seen so that is really all it is so again I don't think you have to worry about like dramatically changing anything um, unless you want to but certainly eyebrow shaping can be a part of corrective makeup as well um, blush sometimes I'm I want people in blush I don't think everybody needs to wear blush I think as long as you have some kind of like a shading on your face that's really nice um, for some people when they get under stage lights they get too flushed um, so blush can make it their faces a little bit too red so I think that that's something that like can kind of depend on the person and the situation um, and then I think it's good for everybody to have like something on their lips even if it's just like a tinted lip balm or even just a regular lip balm um, just having some kind of moisture on your lips especially if you're like in tech and you're talking for 12 hours you're just gonna get your lips could get really chapped they could get dry it's good just to have some kind of moisture there or just like a really natural lip color is good um, and then some kind of setting powder to set everything on your face is also really important um, because we just want everything to stay on the face. That's super important in theater. You don't want to get makeup on your costumes. Um, you don't want to get it on somebody else if you're interacting with them. You don't want to accidentally touch your face or like eat something on a break and your makeup is everywhere. Um, so having something to set it with also really important. Um, eye makeup, I don't always require everyone to wear eye makeup. I think it's good if everybody can do like a basic eye where they understand, you know, you could use the same colors that you highlight and contour your face with to kind of highlight and contour your eyes to help them pop, but um, I never require absolutely everyone to wear makeup I, or eye makeup. I think that that is um, kind of like a personal and like every situation is different. Um, so just to kind of reiterate all of the many things I just talked about, I think having some kind of like a foundation or concealer some kind of contour, some kind of highlight, setting powder for everything, brows, and something on your lips. Those are really good basics to have. I think it's a good idea to learn how to put on blush and to learn how to do a basic eye look and to learn how to put on eyeliner, um, but it is certainly not something that I always require of someone. Um, and then I also think that if you have any tattoos or you are considering getting tattoos, having your own um, tattoo cover makeup is also a really good idea because a lot of times, um, places will leave that until the last second and they will expect you to go out and find it and you may not be somewhere um, where you can find things like that really easily so that's a good idea and I also think too just because you never know if there's going to be someone that can help you do it um, you learning how to do it is also really important I don't think there's anything wrong with performers getting tattoos um, just know that at some point someone may ask you to cover it um, Again, and that could be because it doesn't fit the time period, it doesn't fit with the costume, it doesn't fit with the character. It could be they don't have the license to use it because it's someone else's artwork. Um, it may not just be that they're super conservative, so you don't necessarily have to think that like they dislike you because you have tattoos. It might just be a situation where those tattoos are just not um, the legal fit or the right fit for whatever it is that they're doing, but I think it's a good idea to have some kind of like tattoo cover um, and your kit as well. As far as like the types of like colors and things, if you're just building a basic kit, I think having really like probably like your neutrals are good. I think throwing in like a red lipstick is a great idea. Um, if you feel like you're going to be wearing a lot more of like beauty makeup on stage, if not, again, as long as you have something to moisturize your lips, a tinted lip balm, that would be great. Um, I think if you are gonna go for highlighter, I love all the beautiful shimmery highlighters that are out there right now, but a lot of times on stage those can look very like oily and that, as you can kind of see it on me right now, that's not always what everybody wants and then sometimes too if you are under a really bright light it can almost reflect too much um, because I feel like it's it's not like the same situation as if they have a really bright light on you and you're getting photographed when you're on stage and it's like that much light. Um, 
it's just too much sometimes with the really glittery like highlights and things I would caution you against those and like caution you against like glittery bronzers um, and eyeshadows and things I think like having like a little bit of a sheen is okay but if it's like that really really intense like dewy like oil slick skin that's kind of out right now um, just be careful about it on stage um, and too just because a lot of times those things don't set the best so you really don't want to get it on your um, other performers or on your costumes or things like that so it's all things to kind of like keep into consideration um but otherwise I think yeah for your makeup kit I don't think you have to spend tons of money on it if you want to I've watched people put their entire face on with their hands um as long as your hands are sanitary that's fine if you like brushes great sponges that's great um you just have to find what is best for you personally um and I think always coming prepared with just a few things is better than having nothing. Um, that way too, if you have your own makeup and it's nice and it's personal, you don't have to worry about like any like contamination from someone else using it. I think a lot of theaters are really known for having like scary drawers of makeup um, and who knows how old things are. So it's better too, I think if you have like your own eye makeup and lip stuff and brushes and things, you know how old it is. You can write on there when you bought it so you know when to throw it out um, and you just have a little bit more control over those things. Um, and I think it's a good idea to have something to remove your makeup with. You don't want to fall asleep in it. Even if it's just makeup wipes, it's so bad for your skin um, to let that just kind of soak in. You could get eye infections if you don't take your makeup off. Um, please don't share your makeup. Don't share lipstick. Don't share mascara. If you have to, for some reason, share your lipstick, um, try to cut it off so you're not using the same tube or spray it with 70% alcohol and let the alcohol sanitize it first. If you drop something on the floor, spray it with alcohol and sanitize it. Um, but try really hard not to share your makeup. Don't ever share your mascara. Um, you really don't want to get pink eye. Um, I'm trying, that's really, like, I think, like, yeah, the most important stuff. Um, I think as far as, like, mascara goes, it's not bad to have it in your kit. But if you're not wearing tons of beauty makeup all the time on stage, you may not need it. Um, if you're going to get eyelash extensions, be really careful. Because if you wear a lot of, like, oil-based makeup or use a lot of oil-based products, you can't necessarily do that with your eyelash extensions, so make sure you really look into that um, and you think about like what kind of makeup you may have to be wearing um, while you are wearing those because that could cause some issues for you. Um, but otherwise, yeah, have something to remove your makeup. I think it's great to have a face wash and a moisturizer too, um, but as long as you just have, honestly, foundation, contour, highlight, setting powder, eyebrows, lip balm, you'd be good to go on stage. Um, you can use those things for your whole face if you had to, for eyes, um, everything. Um, add more to it if you love makeup or you need extra makeup or something. If it's like a really specialized, like if I know I need somebody in powder blue eyeshadow, I wouldn't expect them to have that um, as a makeup designer. That would be something that they would probably go out and buy for you. So that's why I think it's good. Like find your basics, have your basics, um, find what works best for you, and then um, either let the theaters expand on that that you work at or like if you figure out like, oh, I love this purple eyeshadow, this looks great on me for auditions, buy that because you figured out that it works. Um, but I think just keep it basics. You don't have to spend tons of money if you don't want to. Um, kind of figure out what works best for you. And then that is how you can just kind of help yourself be like your most comfortable on stage. Um, and just kind of, I guess, put your best face forward under the crazy bright stage lights. <laughs>